Hey everyone, Sprawl here. Welcome to my channel. I have been reading through the Chronicle of Narnia books, all seven of them, and reviewing them as I get there. So I've already reviewed The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, and The Horse and His Boy. I have been reading these books through reading order, as opposed to any other written or publication order, and I am now at book number four. This is the middle point of the Chronicles of Narnia, and this is Prince Caspian. And I still have three more to go after this. But this book, Prince Caspian, is the object of the review of this video. In a nutshell, it's been a thousand years since The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and since Peter, Edmund, Susan and Lucy. Well, at the end of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, those four characters became kings and queens of Narnia and enjoyed and started and enjoyed the golden age of Narnia. And then they returned back to the normal world where they got to resume being kids. So in Narnia, it's been a thousand years and Narnia has been taken over by evil humans who have subjugated the animals of Narnia. Um, so all the talking animals have been driven into hiding. And Narnia is in disarray or a bit of a dystopian future. It's no longer a nice idyllic place to live. But Prince Caspian is a nice human and is sort of leading a bit of an underground army and wants to restore Narnia to its golden days and as part of doing that manages to get Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucy back to Narnia, Narnia to help. So as kids, from the kids point of view it's been about a year since they returned to work from Narnia and they are drawn back to Narnia to help lead the fight along with Crit Prince Caspian to get rid of the evil humans and restore Narnia to its golden age. The, the book itself, not especially long, it's kind of in keeping with the others and didn't take me long to read. It's a nice enjoyable read and um, the first half of it I thought was very much introducing characters and the settings and then the second half rushes through the plot to then get to the end of the story which if you've seen the movie Prince Caspian or read this book then you'll know how it ends but based on the story it was a pretty much a given how it ends. I also watched the movie, the movie has a great big battle in it which is very enjoyable and again as per C.S. Lewis's style kind of gives the broad strokes of the story in this writing but leaves your imagination to fill in the blanks, especially with the battle. So there is a fight in here between King Peter and the leader of the enemy, which in actual fact is quite brutal. I was pretty surprised at how brutal the description was in the book, considering it's aimed for kids. And I was surprised. And it's like, pff, with swords aiming to kill each other, and hacking off of, of limbs. I won't go into much more detail for that. I will enjoy, leave it for you to enjoy reading the book to see what I'm referring to. But yes, I was surprised at how brutal. But again, battles generally left your imagination, which has its advantages of, of you imagining in those gaps. But at the same time, you're thinking, sometimes you could do with a bit more description on what is happening. But again, it is all very much in keeping with C.S. Lewis's style. Aslan the Lion, Great Lion, does feature in the book. And again, it's very mystical and seems a bit all-knowing. But at the same time, I do think Aslan is a bit of a douche. Because Narnia, which he helped create, and he looks after, has spent like a thousand years and... Uh, dictatorship rule from evil humans who have done horrible things to Narnia and all the talking animals have been driven into hiding and I'm there thinking well 
Aslan is just not there doing anything about it and within the book it's established that Aslan hasn't been seen for a while and so I'm thinking hey it's not a very nice nice lion you know leaving Narnia to suffer under this evil rule and he waits until you know Peter, Susan, Edmund and Lucid have, have turned up before he actually does anything about it and at the same time the characters within this book you know, he doesn't really reveal himself to you know, those characters until much closer towards the end and even then isn't upfront about what needs to be done so sort of. like just think yeah Azan's not a very good lord in a way kind of, he can could have done something about by this evil dictatorship but does nothing until right at the end and leaves Narnia to be suffering until you know Peter and Co turn up so so whilst Aslan is all powerful I just don't think he's a very nice character because he just leaves people to suffer until much later on despite all that it is a very enjoyable read doesn't take long to read through it's a very good book or well and in keeping with the Chronicles of Narnia or the other books I highly recommend it and if you've enjoyed this review please do like subscribe check out my other other videos and I'll be back to review for the rest of the Narnia books soon in the meantime have a fantastic rest of your day and if you've not read this book do give it a read and if you've not seen the movie do give it a watch it's an enjoyable movie as well and sort of shows a bit of a different light to some of the stuff as opposed to the book and actually one other thing that does does crop up from this in my thinking is um, in the magician's nephew Aslan recruits a human adult male and female to be the first king and queen of Narnia um, in Prince Caspian and the horse and his boy there are other countries which have lots of humans and here in Prince Caspian um, I won't say what happens to all these humans but they do have a bit of a fate in this book but then Prince Caspian becomes the next king of Narnia and as already established Peter, Edmund, Susan and Lucy were kings of queens of Narnia for many years but for some reason in this book it's decided by Aslan that Peter and Susan can no longer return to Narnia because they're now too old but I'm thinking wait 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 there are kids in this book in the previous books they were adults being kings of, and queens of Narnia there's plenty of other adults in Narnia and Prince Caspian becomes a new king of Narnia so why do Peter and Susan but so I'll say that again but why are now Peter and Susan too old to return to Narnia it puzzles me it's not really explained and again makes me think of Aslan as being a bit of a of a rubbish character deciding these two characters are now too old to return to Narnia again makes no sense to me especially when you've got lots of other adults living in Narnia being kings and all that yeah I mean as I'm reading through these books I'm just thinking Aslan not a very nice character lording it over all these other other characters being almighty and powerful and then when these characters need him because they're all suffering some evil Aslan is nowhere to be seen until some other characters come along to save the world first so yeah my opinion of Aslan not very good but the book's still enjoyable and I recommend reading it good solid 8 out of 10 and some nice battles at the end as well so if you like the video please like subscribe check out my others I'll be back to review the Voyager of the Dawn Treader soon as that is the next one in sequence in the meantime have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon bye